Right now, new and current customers can get any phone for free at U.S. Cellular. So you can connect with all your family members this holiday season. You can even call your aunt who always makes you talk to your cousin who's a dog. Or, you know, maybe just send her a festive text. Get the gift of connection at U.S. Cellular. Get any phone free today. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. We value human connection with fewer distractions. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. Visit your U.S. Cellular authorized agent, Cellular Advantage, located at 918 South Locust Street in Glenwood. Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content which may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. And darn Totten. Carry their other two co-hosts. <laughs> and for this whole episode. Ray today is about, a no bones day. <laughs> rant about their menstruation for 10 minutes while mm-hmm. recording, forgetting that their poor editor has to sift through all that. He <laughs> will be fine. <laughs> It's fine. Suck it, John. (laughs) He doesn't know. How dare you? (laughs) How dare you, John? Yeah, I have a lot of questions. First one, how dare you? (laughs) (laughs) That is is hands down Zach's favorite moment on television of all time. (laughs) He loves Kelly from The Office. That is his favorite of all time. He's so good. I'm feeling very (laughs) Kelly today. (laughs) <laughs> oh, who uh, are we? Oh, fuck it. I'm Kenyon. <laughs> I'm Lucy. Uh, <laughs> I'm Amanda. <laughs> and we're going to be fine. And actually, the day are after. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> and the day after we record this, Amanda and Lucy and Scott are coming to visit me in Louisville. It's the I'm only so thing keeping me upright today. Mm-hmm. Those yeah. cookies, man. I'm yeah, doing Lucy, it for the cookies. Excited. Lucy is strictly coming for the chocolate chip cookies at Please and Thank You. She has That's no it. interest in us. As I, yeah, really she has good. mentioned the cookies a minimum of 12 times. At, at least. <laughs> Every time we talk about our trip. <laughs> Can we go over the itinerary one more time? Are we going to that cookie place? And where do the cookies fit in? Which yeah. time is the cookies? <laughs> Let me consult the itinerary. When you are we what? going to the cookies? I, oh, <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's on oh the docket my. for tomorrow. <laughs> I will have that cookie within the next <laughs> We've gone 30 over hours. So many. When are we going to the cookies? <laughs> We've discussed it. Should I call ahead? Have to make a double bath. <laughs> Hi, so we're coming. <laughs> I'm going to get some to go. <laughs> just want to give you a heads up. And Lucy's not even a sweets person, no. really. No. I don't like desserts, but for whatever reason, these cookies are so they are good. It. They're really good. Those anyway. cookies fuck. <laughs> let's, let's blaze through this job we have and go so get, we can to, get some to some fucking cookies. cookies. Where are the turtles? <laughs> you can Uh-oh. order them online for anyone listening. <laughs> Wow, free ad. Let's do it. You know what? Yeah, get get at us, please, and thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> please, and thank you. You're, you're welcome. welcome. <laughs> We're very oh polite God. here at Wine and Crime. <laughs> get at us, please, and thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, and have a good evening. Oh, good night and good luck. <laughs> So, uh, this week we have a very special gals pick for you. Because we wanted to treat ourselves. Because everything hurts. And so (laughs) we will be discussing the topic of intriguing interrogations. Oh, I am intrigued. Mm -hmm. I am excited for my case. I like my case too. It's, It's interesting and there are lots of different ways you could go with interrogation, so I'm sure we will have more episodes. Mine's about. not really even a case, and I will be interrogating you. 
Oh, so oh. it's gonna be soups fun. You're gonna love it. Mm, cool. I think. I think my. <laughs> I'm going through a is... tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> my desktop I, I, is going I, through a tunnel. Elevator. I got it. I don't know. I'll, I'll you back. Nope. You're going to dolphin. <laughs> dolphin? <laughs> Dumpin? Dolphin. Okay. All right. Oh. All right. Uh, let's get to the wine crime pairing, because frankly, I could use it. Oh, my God. Couldn't we all? I have a very fun wine to feature for us today. Mm. It is from Katarzyna or Katarzyna. <laughs> it's Zina. <laughs> Vineyards. This is the question mark Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot blend. Ooh. This puppy is a multiple award winner. Like she has, let's see, six. She's eight, an overachiever. Eight awards. Whoa. Jesus. Yeah. Settle down. Really, really. <laughs> She's my older sister. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm triggered. God. <laughs> and like my older sister, she has an intense, saturated red color with soft violet <laughs> hues. The nose okay. is an explosion of spices, smoke, ripe forest fruits, and well-integrated oak. The wine is captivating, voluminous. The body is velvet with notes of vanilla, chocolate, and ripe blueberries. Mm. The long finish and elegant aftertaste <laughs> gives this glass... Get, nope, that's the wrong words. Gives the class of this <laughs> unforgettable wine. Combines very well with dishes from large game, ripe cheese, and grilled red meat. <laughs> Large game. Yeah, wow. like a big old bird. <laughs> <laughs> Sip it with a turkey leg, king. Horse meat. Horse meat. Oh. I don't think horse is, is game, is it? <laughs> Wouldn't it be like Wild deer horse? or something? Maybe. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. Moose? She's a blend of 60% cab sav and 40% Merlot with a perfect for the day we're having alcohol by volume, 14.5%. <laughs> nice. Need that little extra kick. Hit mm -hmm. me with it. She mm -hmm. is a papper, and this battle is heavy and thick, so you're going to want to put her between your legs <laughs> to keep it nice and still while My you God. screw it. <laughs> Shall we pop? Out? I am okay. I'm scared. Are you okay? No. Should someone check on you? Yes. Well, welfare check. And Bill's bring tacos. gone for the day. I've been left alone. I did. My period did order me Taco Bell yesterday. Oh, so Bill, Bill's mates. conveniently gone for the day. Yeah, <laughs> he's a wise man. He has to work. Apparently. Yeah. Doesn't he work from home? <laughs> well, he apparently special has a assignment video today, shoot babe. today. Yep. Special yeah, assignment. I'm going to work overtime. I think it's going to be an 18 hour day. I he's going to get gonna kicked out of, all week. He's going to get kicked out of the coffee shop he's squatting at. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's his that's his problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. File it under not. My problem. <laughs> anyway, let's pop this bad boy, shall we? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thick Struggle bus pop. pop. That was a thick pop. Thick. Yeah. Or so should thick. we say thick pop? Because it's a question mark. Why? Oh, I see what you did there. I immediately forgot. Inflection? Uh. <laughs> well, Lucy... Uh, I'm not gonna twist the screws oh. to get your segment. I don't know. What's your fucking segment? Crushed it. <laughs> What's the background in psych? Who <laughs> are you? This is going seamlessly, honestly. I love this episode, personally. <laughs> okay, so interrogation, or quote-unquote questioning, mm. is pointed interviewing most commonly employed by law enforcement, military personnel, and intelligence agencies, oh. but also organized crime syndicates and terrorist organizations. Oh. And moms. And, and, mo and, and Kenyan's moms. moms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the goal is to elicit useful information related to crime or culpability or who you went out on the lake with on the pontoon. Oh. Yeah. I know you didn't run through sprinklers. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know you're on a pontoon with you those boys from like the sailing lake. school. Mm-hmm. I smell zebra mussels. Oh. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> but also, and clean regret. Up. And regret. <laughs> you got to clean off your motor I after you get like out of the zebra lake. zebra mussels <laughs> and regret. <laughs> and Pizza Hut. That's the regret. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so there are a bunch of different techniques when it comes to interrogation. And the first of which is deception. So obviously mm-hmm. lying to a detainee is a big part of eliciting useful information. And thanks to a 1969 U.S. Supreme Court decision, Frazier versus Cup. Crane. This is, this is totally legal in the United States. That mm-hmm. is so wild to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, the story behind this decision, police detained a 20-year-old Marine named Martin Frazier on a tip that he and his cousin were seen with murder victim Russell Marlowe. The cops lied to Frazier and told him that his cousin had already confessed to the murder and had implicated Frazier as well. So despite Frazier asking for an attorney, he continued to be interrogated by the cops until he confessed. And this confession was used against him at trial and he was convicted. That is I just think that you shouldn't be able to question someone until there's a lawyer present. Right. Yeah. You know, like it it shouldn't be a they have to ask and then Mm -hmm. they can you can kind of like Mm -mm. pretend out of it. Yeah, pretend like your sweet ass time getting a public defender, whatever. Mm -hmm. It should just be like that is standard. Same thing with like juvenile yeah suspects. Like you shouldn't be allowed to question them without a parent, guardian, lawyer present. Mm -hmm. If they if you don't ask them questions and they volunteer information. Different situation. Maybe different as long as they've been read their Miranda rights. But Mm -hmm. like, I just don't think, I don't know. It just leaves too much Mm -hmm. up to chance. Yeah. And we'll kind of get to that. So in this uh, Supreme Court decision, basically Frazier appealed the conviction to the Supreme Court and they shot it down. And obviously this case was more complicated than what I've just laid out. But the point is, that the Frazier versus Cup ruling established a precedent for a confession being voluntary, even if deceptive tactics were used on the ha- on the behalf of like law enforcement. Mm-hmm. And in other countries, it probably. I mean, there are like a lots of there are like a lot of other countries. There are so many countries. But like, <laughs> oh I mean, there are like a lot of countries, <laughs> but like <laughs> dozens. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> It is illegal in some countries to for investigators to lie to detainees. Probably. Mm. It seems really fucked up. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So deceptive tactics can include anything from lying about the strength of the state's case, making misleading statements, or telling the detainee that they've been implicated by someone else. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. the most fucked up one. I think they should be allowed to say, like, sort of subjective things. Like, a cop should be allowed to say, like, look, we know you did it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like, that kind of stuff. But not... Not saying your cousin already confessed and said that you were in on it, too. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, you could put pressure. You could say, like, if your cousin flips first, you're going to be in more trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is true. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't... I just don't get it. Yeah. It's not... It's not great. So another tactic is verbal and nonverbal cues. So this is more about the detainee's behaviors during interrogation. Investigators are trained to identify certain cues that can suggest whether someone is lying or telling the truth over a period of repeated interrogations. So, for example, liars display significantly fewer smiles, self-manipulations, pauses, and less gaze aversion than truth-tellers. What are Liar- self manipulations? Just like moving around? I think it's yeah, I th- yeah, I think so. I'm not really okay. sure what that meant. Liars also might make more errors in their speech because lying requires more cognitive thought and conscious control than telling the truth. Mm. I also heard recently that if somebody is telling the truth, they're more likely to like gesture more, which might be the self manipulations thing. I haven't oh, heard that. 
Yeah. I think it'd be the other way around. It'd be like a distraction. Right. But I think it takes so much conscious thought to come up with the words and the lie Mm. that you're not, you know, subconsciously make gesturing and making movements, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe. That makes sense. Yeah. Because of what we just said, the that they might make more errors in their speech. Mm-hmm. Because they're focusing more on what their story is. Sure. Mm-hmm. So another technique is good cop, bad cop. Mm. Classic. Works That'll really good not. with kids as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a psychological tactic used in both interrogation and negotiations, where there are two interrogators taking opposite approaches to the detainee. One adopts a hostile, accusatory demeanor, emphasizing threats of punishment, while the other is nicer, more sympathetic, and emphasizing reward to convince the subject to cooperate. Mm. What was the, was there, I think it was like a Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg movie. Oh, yeah. Where? (laughs) Is it Will Ferrell married to like, uh, not Eva Longoria? Yes. Yeah. Ava Longoria. Uh, no, not Ava Longoria. The the other really hot one. Eva Mendez. Eva Mendez, yes. who's married to Ryan Gosling. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's that movie where one of them they're like, okay, we're gonna be good cop, bad cop, whatever, and then they go in and you know goes in hard, and then Will Ferrell goes in even harder. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, what the hell? And he's like, oh, I thought you said bad cop, bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. What's the name of that movie? That's a hilarious movie. I know. I don't remember. It, I'm going to Google that it scene. because many people out there are screaming it right now. Mm-hmm. I think there was also something about sharks. I don't know. It was funny oh, at word. the time. Maybe it doesn't We're hold up. This. I have no idea. It's called The Other Guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good movie. Corey and I watched that one of the first nights we were in China on my laptop. <laughs> Cute. Classic. Oh, it was my only moment of comfort those early days. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then we have some less subtle interrogation tactics. Mm. The first of which is the use of mind-altering drugs. Oh, fun. Not only is this uh-huh. ineffective, but it's also illegal pretty much all around the world. In 1988, the UN adopted the Body of Principles for the Protection of All Persons Under Any Form of Detention or Imprisonment. Mm. which forbids, quote, methods of interrogation which impair the capacity of decision of judgment. And furthermore, the World Medical Association and American Medical Association, for example, both forbid participation by physicians in interrogations. Mm -hmm. Which is different than, like, calling a physician if someone needs medical attention. This is like using a physician to help you extract Mm -hmm. information, which is fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then pretty much for the rest of my segment, I'm issuing a blanket trigger warning because we're going to be talking about torture. Mm. Yep. We have been torturing people for thousands of years. In general, it's been recognized early on. As a total bullshit way of uh, extracting information. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. According to the Roman imperial jurist Ulpian in the third century AD, there is, quote, no means of obtaining the truth from those who have the strength to resist, while those unable to withstand the pain will tell any lie rather than suffer it. Right. Mm-hmm. Just to get out of the situation they're in. Right. Right. So there's no way. You either are going to get nothing or Mm -hmm. you're going to get so much that there's no way to tell the truth from the bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I feel like torture as a means of getting information, at that point, it doesn't matter what the information is or whether it's true. Mm -hmm. It's just getting an answer. Mm -hmm. I think it's just justification for treating people like shit. Yeah. Even though it's it's a a power move. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. It's 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 coercion and it's trying to instill fear in the enemy. It's mm-hmm. not actually trying to get information. Mm-mm. And we just rely on that because people, you know, like to say like, oh, well, what if we could avoid an attack or avoid the loss of life? But it, there's no proof that it does. Mm-hmm. Yep. We'll get to it. So within the first 1,200 years or so of Christianity, torture was used far less frequently for investigative purposes because it was considered antithetical to the teachings of Christ. Mm-hmm. Really? So that was nice for a little while. Didn't they we use kinda, it like a shit ton in the 
Dark Ages and Middle Ages? Well, wouldn't you know it, in the 13th century, many oh. European states picked it back up for religious inquisitions, ironically, which led to torture being used again for secular investigations as well. Mm-hmm. So for a while, they were like, oh, Jesus. And then they're like, nope. Actually, no, never mind. Like, oh, we're going to use Jesus. it in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Then it's what en- he would have wanted. It's what mm-hmm. he would have wanted. The Enlightenment period saw another dip in torture only to be brought back again in the early 20th century by authoritarian states like fascist Italy and Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. And if you thought we in the U.S. were past that, you're fucking wrong. Mm -hmm. During the Cold War, the CIA used waterboarding, sleep deprivation, electric shock, sensory deprivation, also called white torture. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times you're just in a bright white room with no sound and no, no, sense, of, of, no sense of time, which apparently is like mm-hmm. really, really distressing and yeah. mm-hmm. effective at fucking with someone mm-hmm. psychologically. Oh. Yeah, that's all it is. is sen- mm-hmm. Sensory deprivation, just fucking with them on a very base psychological level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Also, psychological stress in general and self-inflicted pain to root out communists. In the 80s, the CIA outsourced its torture programs to developing nations called torture by proxy. So if it's not happening on U.S. soil, then the U.S. isn't really responsible for it. Yeah, Black sites, Mm -hmm. regimes that we prop up Mm -hmm. after September 11th. The government quit even pretending to care about how bad it looks, legally authorizing some forms of interrogation by torture under euphemisms such as enhanced interrogation techniques Mm -hmm. or interrogation in depth to collect intelligence on Al Qaeda. So some examples. This is bad. Some examples of, quote unquote, enhanced interrogation techniques include beating Binding in contorted stress positions, Mm -hmm. which can really easily kill you. Yeah. Yeah. You could accidentally choke or. Yeah. Well, we taught we've talked. uh, I think it was in a GAC episode when I talked about that book called Autopsy, Mm -hmm. like all those freak ways that you can die and positional asphyxiation Mm -hmm. is high on that list. Mm -hmm. You could have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. The pressure inside your body is really sensitive and it can Mm -hmm. have like devastating lethal effects if you fuck with the pressure Mm -hmm. also you could just cause lasting lasting physiological damage to somebody Mm -hmm. like i mean my with my back like if somebody it just sitting cross-legged on the floor for Mm -hmm. too long my back would literally never recover and I would be in chronic pain for the rest You'd of the You'd be life. so easy to torture. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your oh, existence yeah. is torture. <laughs> I would find a way to off myself so quickly in that <laughs> scenario. Like, I would, I, would have, I would have no will to survive and get through it mm-hmm. whatsoever. You would just explode into dust. Uh-huh. If I'm just mildly uncomfortable... It's not I, great. I can't handle it. <laughs> Okay. Other enhanced interrogation techniques. <laughs> I know include, myself. Include know. Kenyan sleeping for two nights away from her purple mattress. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. But actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Hooding. Flying economy. <laughs> I do have to fly economy, sadly. Sadly, my means do not match my, my, my needs. wishes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Subjection to deafening noise, mm. s- sleep disruption, sleep deprivation to the point of hallucination, deprivation of food, drink, and medical care for wounds, as well as waterboarding, walling, sexual humiliation, subjection to extreme heat or extreme cold, confinement in a small in small coffin like boxes. Ugh. These are just all of this that we're listing is happening right now. Now somewhere, right now. yeah. Yeah. And although also I do think walling is so fucking medieval. Walling mm-hmm. might just be 
forcing someone to listen to Wonderwall over and over and over. Oh, again. That's how no. I am. I mean, interpreting I like that that. Song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or this podcast. Yeah, in yeah. Guantanamo Bay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think walling actually is like like having to do prolonged wall sits. Mm-hmm, probably. It's something like that. And then like being beaten if you fall, which like I, again, don't have the abs, mm-hmm. would not last 10 seconds. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Anyway. This is all horrific. I'm trying, I'm not making light of it. It is Mm-mm. fucking horrific. The worst ones are coming up right oh, now. Oh, good. Thanks. Medically unnecessary rectal rehydration. Ooh. I guess just what does that even entail? Pumping water it's, in your butt. Yeah, if if you refuse to, like, if you're um, refusing to eat or drink, they'll force feed you violently, or and. But this is saying it uh, when it's unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Mm. But also, even when it's necessary, the, I'm sure they'll do it in a very brutal way, mm-hmm. or they'll just claim it's necessary, but it's really just to right fuck torture you. you. Yeah. Uh, also, rectal fluid resuscitation and rectal feeding. Assuming those are all basically the same. It's putting putting shit up your butt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, which is basically sexual humiliation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is what it is. Coupled with coupled with pain and mm-hmm. and then this stupid made up excuse that it's medically necessary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I and mean, also- they used to force feed suffragettes. Or suffragists, I always forget which is which. They used to force feed them in prison and like sexualized it, basically, mm-hmm. like to like touch their breasts, to like strap them down and hold them before they did the force feeding. Like it's just it's that, but usually against men mm-hmm. now. So it's focused on the rectum mm-hmm. to sexually humiliate them. Yeah, it's just not good. Also, threats to detainees' families, such as threats to harm children and threats to sexually abuse or cut the throats of detainees' mothers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, like, religious fuckery. So, like, you know, threatening to feed them pork Mm -hmm. if they, if, you know, for religious reasons, they won't eat pork. Or, like, just cultural things, like a lot of Mm dog-related insults and, and use of, like, dogs to scare people. The list goes on. It's yeah. endless, yeah. <laughs> right. So back to the idea of interrogation, whether or not the torture of untold thousands of victims at Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo, and other black sites around the globe elicit any useful information is disputed, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Like, at, at least disputed, at best, like, unknown. Yeah. Ugh. I mean... Yeah, look so, where and, look and, where we ended up in fucking right. Iraq and Afghanistan. You yeah. mm-hmm. you think this worked? Probably not. Mm-hmm. And you know, we're the U.S. is definitely far from the only people doing this. Oh well, yeah, fuck no. keep in mind. Yeah, but we, we should be above it. We should, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. we don't no. need to be doing it. No, this is not this is not the sign of a great and powerful nation. No. Okay, so the read technique is the most commonly used technique in the U.S. in terms of, like, domestic criminal interrogation. So anyone who has seen interrogation room CCTV footage on a true crime show will recognize this technique. Mm -hmm. There are nine steps of interrogation according to the technique, and this is from... It was either a book or just a report called Investigations and the Art of the Interview by Black and Fennelly. I've cited it at the bottom of this page. So, number one, we come in with positive confrontation. So you advise the suspect that the evidence has led the police to the individual as the suspect. Offer the person an early opportunity to explain why the offense took place. So, like, hey, buddy, sorry to have to drag you in here. We just got to clear up a couple of things. No big deal. Mm. And don't you start by asking, like, easy questions? So that you can kind of, just like with a lie detector test, you want to like kind of assess their baseline responses and then you work up to the harder questions. Well, we'll get to it because that is the first of nine steps. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Number two, try to shift the blame away from the suspect to some other person or set of circumstances that prompted the suspect to commit the crime. That is, Mm. develop themes containing reasons that will psychologically justify or excuse the crime. Mm-hmm. These like, themes, we know you didn't mean to do it. These things mm-hmm. happen. You right. know, he'd, he'd been 
you know, pressuring you or you've mm-hmm. been under a lot of stress lately. Mm-hmm. Themes. Your wife is a real bitch. <laughs> the wife is a real bitch will come in later. Mm. Mm. Themes may be developed or changed to find one to which the accused is most responsive. So, oh, so you had a gun in your car, but you've got a permit. So, like, whatever. Lots of guys have guns in their cars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number three, try to minimize the frequency of suspect denials. So, no, I'm sure you're in the clear. Like, don't worry about it. We just got to take we just got to take this step by step. At this point, number four. At this point, the accused will often give a reason why he or she did not or could not commit the crime. Try to use this to move towards the acknowledgement of what they did do. So, for example, so you were at the strip club at the time Mm. of the shooting, but, you know, you were in the parking lot. You weren't in the building. Mm -hmm. Mm. Number five, reinforce sincerity to ensure that the suspect is receptive. So again, I'm on your side here. We're trying to help you play the good cop. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're all still in good cop territory. Mm -hmm. We don't really shift into bad cop until the very end because you're again, you're trying to elicit information Mm -hmm. and trying to get as much as they as you can before they shut down. Right. And once you go bad cop, you can't really go. You can't really go back. You'd have to get a different person in there. Yeah, well, they have, yeah, they've already kind of shut down. So Mm -hmm. number six, the suspect will become quieter and will listen. Move the theme of the discussion toward offering alternatives. If the suspect cries at this point, you can infer guilt. So you can say maybe it was someone else who had just gotten into a fight with the bouncer. And maybe Mm -hmm. this person also had a gun in his car. Like maybe Mm -hmm. it was X, Y, and Z. Maybe. So when it when you say if the suspect cries, you can infer guilt, does that mean that you could be like, look, I know you feel really bad about it. You didn't mean for it to happen. Like mm-hmm. you can, inf- you can. Yeah, I think uh, you can skip a couple steps. Okay. Mm-hmm. If the person is already breaking down at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number seven, pose the alternative question, giving two choices for what happened. One more socially acceptable than the other. The suspect is expected to choose the easier option, but whichever alternative between the two that the suspect chooses, they're basically admitting guilt because there is always a third option, which is to maintain that they didn't commit the crime at all. Mm -hmm. So he could say, maybe you just had a moment of rage and you thought, you know, there would be no witnesses. You could get away with it, whatever. It was just a it was just a knee jerk reaction. Or maybe you went in there with the intent of murdering the bouncer. And then if a guilty person would just say like, oh, I was just so upset. You know, I, mm-hmm. I didn't think about it beforehand. And an innocent person would be You're like, like I, no, didn't I didn't do, any of those do it. Yeah. 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 This this step really works with kids. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Number eight, lead the suspect to repeat the admission of guilt in front of witnesses and develop corroborating information to establish the validity of the confession. So at that point, they've already confessed to something if they're mm-hmm. guilty. So that's when you're like, that's when you co- co- corroborate. So you could say, well, that's funny because we have 11 dancers who witnessed you shooting the bouncer. Mm-hmm. And number nine, document the suspect's admission or confession and have him or her prepare a recorded statement, be that audio, video, or written. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But presumably, if you are recording the interrogation, that has already happened. Yes. This technique was sort of developed in the 50s. Mm. So they didn't just have stuff running all the time. They didn't have, yeah, constant security cameras. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we know from said true crime shows, critics of this method claim that it's too easy to elicit false confessions using this method, especially Mm -hmm. with juveniles, with second language speakers in their non-native language, and Mm -hmm. with people whose communication or language abilities are affected by mental disabilities, including reduced intellectual capacity. Brendan Brendan Dassey. Dassey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who fit two of these three. Yep. Yeah. Um, the second language speakers and the non-native language thing, that is just so egregious. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care how good your second language is unless you are – like, you can be a, a dual native speaker, for mm-hmm. example. Like, then that's fine. But if it's anything less than a native speaker in that language, you should not be interrogated in that language. Well, it's and not even just fair. Like, even just, like, the cultural incompetency of mm-hmm. this this – tactic like Mm -hmm. this is obviously a 
checklist rooted in white supremacy and it's culturally not going to land mm-hmm. most of the time with, you know, folks who are like non-white, non, you know, English speaking. Yeah. It's not like just a matter. People. It's not yeah. just a matter of translation. Mm-hmm. It, that's right. Just, that's not it. It's, yeah, it's that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at. Cause there's like, there's nuances a power here. dynamic. Yeah. Like there are cultures that don't have sarcasm right. at all in their culture. Mm-hmm. So there like, are all kinds of lingo. Like I just heard, listened to some podcast episode where they were interviewing a, a journalist who was detained in Iran, mm-hmm. and he, the the Iranians used like copies of emails where he was just like in a work capacity emailing somebody and was like, "Hey man, sorry I was radio silent. Like I've been busy. Whatever. Here's like what you needed." Right. And it was like just a fucking work email. And the Iranians were like, what do you mean you went radio silent? Right. You're what a is this spy. code for? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like he no, he's like, eh, sure, like that originated as spy language, but now we just say it. You know, yeah. like we, that's just something we say. Yeah. That's like American that, colloquialism. Right. Slang. That's but it doesn't translate. About the the mm. Molly Tibbetts case here in Iowa, the mm. the young woman who was murdered when she was like out for a jog and they mm-hmm. found her in a cornfield. The guy that they arrested and ultimately convicted was an undocumented Hispanic immigrant, and he did not speak English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he had a quote unquote translator at the trial. But they I I feel so sorry for the victim and her family, obviously. And Mm -hmm. it's definitely possible that he did commit this crime. But he still needs a fair trial. Exactly. But it rubs me such the wrong way, the way that this all shook out. Mm hmm. It, it's just, it's really I, terrible. I couldn't defend myself properly in French, and mm-hmm. I speak really good French. I fucking majored in it. I, you know. It's I, hard to defend yourself properly in your native language, right, right. let alone. Yeah, I just yeah. can't. So It's not fucking fair. It should be illegal. So that all of this is to say that interrogations are Difficult and problematic. That's very messy. Yeah, problematic, exactly. Problematic. So that's mm. my segment. I'm sure wow. we'll be raging for the rest of this episode. Mm-hmm. I Fantastic. actually very well done. Thanks. Learned a lot. This is a fascinating topic. I'm sure we will do it again from a slightly different angle another time. But my case, I didn't want to rage, mm-hmm. so I I went at it from a different perspective but Good. Mm-hmm. we'll get to it after a quick word from our sponsors let's, oh, do, let's it. do it what better way to welcome the fall season aka the best season mm-hmm. than with new shoes oh oh yeah i mean they go Every hand season. in hand it's mm-hmm. it's foot back foot. to school shopping foot. hand and foot <laughs> <laughs> so from their best-selling round and pointed toe flats, I have both, to sneakers made for any adventure and loafers mm-hmm. made for moments when comfort is a must. Comfort's always a must, by the way. Rothy's has everything you need to start fall on the right foot, plus their spacious, washable bags are perfect for effortlessly carrying around your essentials. And nothing says fall like soft, plush merino wool. For the third year in a row, Rothy's is launching an exclusive autumn collection featuring washable merino wool styles. Hello! Ugh. They are incredibly comfortable, cozy, and 100% machine washable, and they come in a variety of colors, patterns, and styles. So, run, don't walk. My sister-in-law is just as obsessed with Rothy's as I am, Mm -hmm. and she sent me a link to these merino wool slip-on beauties, Mm -hmm. and... They're on both of our Christmas lists mm-hmm. this year. Mm-hmm. I just cannot get enough. And my Rothy's, I wear shamelessly spring, summer, winter, and fall. Oh, every season. Year round. Every get a little, single day. They get a little wet. Your feet get a little stanky. You throw them on the washing machine. And they're as good as new. Mm-hmm. And also, if you're more into traditionally men's shoes, mm-hmm. Rothy's has your feet covered, too. They now sell men's sneakers and men's driving loafers. Hi, hello. Yeah, so cute. I want them. Yeah. They feature the same level of crafts- craftsmanship as all of Rothy's other shoes. They're durable, washable, better for the planet, and they're rigorously tested for a perfect fit. Wash after wash. You don't need to fear the stinky toes. Yeah. No. So no Rothy's fear. got your back. 
They really do. So to help you welcome the fall season in style, Rothy's is doing something special. That's right. They gave us the chance to share this super rare opportunity with our listeners for a limited time. So right now, you can get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com forward slash gals. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com forward slash G-A-L-S. So head to rothys.com forward slash gals to find your new favorites today and treat your feet. Treat them. FrameBridge makes it easier and more affordable than ever to custom frame everything that matters without ever leaving the house. Our favorite Mm -hmm. thing to do. Mm -hmm. Not leaving Mm -hmm. the house. Oh, yeah. From art prints and posters to the photos you just got sitting on your phone collecting cyber dust, you can FrameBridge just about anything. This holiday season, FrameBridge is the perfect way to give the gift they'll actually want to receive. Don't just give slippers again. Give them something special, something only you could give, something a little more personal. Mm -hmm. This year, gift better with FrameBridge. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, last year, my favorite gift from my partner was framed at FrameBridge. It's my favorite photo of me and my dad from my sister's wedding. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with it. And it's literally so easy that while Lucy was like doing that intro I just ordered <laughs> Bill's Christmas gift she literally <laughs> did you guys she <laughs> literally <laughs> did it took me 15 seconds <laughs> to upload my two photos from a trip that we took to Iowa a little while back during the pandy and they are going to be here very soon I'm so excited and here's how you can do it too just go to framebridge.com and upload your photo or they'll send you a packaging uh, a chemistry a packaging occurs <laughs> or they'll send you packaging to safely mail in your physical pieces preview your item online in dozens of frame styles and gallery wall layouts this is my favorite part so the photo that the photos I had framed are like a very mid-century style photo shoot we did. Mm-hmm. And so I picked like a very specific type of frame to really go with the picture. And then you can change the color of like the matting in the frame. It's literally perfect and amazing. I love all of their frame styles. Yeah. Like it's such a well curated collection it of is. frame styles and it's not like overwhelming. They just Mm-mm. nail it. They really do. So you choose your favorite, or if you're like me and you're easily overwhelmed, you can get free recommendations from their talented designers. And then the experts at FrameBridge will custom frame your item and deliver your finished piece straight to you or anyone on your list. It's a handcrafted, personalized gift from FrameBridge that starts at $39. Mm-hmm. And all shipping is free. Plus, our listeners will get 15% off their first order at FrameBridge.com when they use our code WINECRIME. So order online at FrameBridge.com or you can stop by a FrameBridge store to work with a designer in person. If you're in New York, D.C., Atlanta, Philly, Boston, or Chicago. (laughs) So get started today. Frame your photos or send someone the perfect gift. Go to FrameBridge.com and use promo code WINECRIME to save an additional 15% off your first order. Just go to FrameBridge.com, promo code WINECRIME, FrameBridge.com, promo code WINECRIME, and treat your walls. Treat them. Are we ready for my case? Never and yes. Who knows? (laughs) Too early to tell. So, Mary Catherine Higdon and Stephen Freeman grew up in Griffin, Georgia, Aww. a suburb of Atlanta. Don't, Gryffindor. Don't, okay, I was going to say, don't ah uh, just yet. <laughs> this is a true crime show. Aw, it is. Aw, they grew up in Georgia. Precious. They began dating in high school and moved in together not long after graduation. Stephen found work repairing roofs, and Mary Catherine worked as a preschool teacher's aide. And on the total opposite end of the spectrum, although maybe not for Georgia, also worked part time selling guns at a local sporting goods store. Huh, okay. So, so a little pre K, a little guns. Yeah. Actually, a lot of guns, and we will get to it. Both enjoyed outdoorsy activities like hunting and fishing, and both were very into guns as a mm-hmm. hobby. Although, according to some sources, Mary Catherine was the one who had a deeper knowledge of them, which she prided herself on. So she was like, she sold them. She knew Mm. all about them. It was like her shtick. It was her thing. That's a very My Cousin Vinny. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I fucking love that movie. My biological clock is ticking like this. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I knew that would land with you. Oh my god. <laughs> my husband drunk on New Year's Eve watching my cousin Vinny on TV every five seconds. That's what won her the Oscar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everything that came out of Marissa Tomei's mouth, Zach would just go, that's what won her the Oscar. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Everything that came out of her mouth did kind of win her the Oscar. Her husband is so fucking weird. He's such a drama king. He really is. He's Kenyan in a male form. Mm -hmm. I know. I love him. Okay. So a sign on her wall in their home read, Beware, one shotgun toting pistol packing southern bell lives here. Oh, ew. Mm Mm-hmm. Was it a wood sign? Did it have a tiny live, laugh, love underneath it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> a it's little like, stamp. It's in like white script. Boof. So the couple's friends and family have said that their many shared interests made the two seem compatible at first. Mm, but over, we always do. But over time, their relationship became toxic and violent. Mm-hmm. A friend of Stephen's named Andrew McCree would later describe to police how Stephen would sometimes spend the night at his house after fighting with Mary Catherine, including on at least one occasion after Mary Catherine had pointed a gun at him. Jesus. A Southern Belle will do that. Mm. And Mary Catherine's sister would describe seeing bruises on Mary Catherine's arms that she brushed off as being from Stephen, quote, grabbing her too hard. Mm. Uh. So it's it's tough to know what's going on behind closed doors mm-hmm. and like where the abuse is stemming from and who is the victim and who is the perpetrator and because you know both sides already have opposing perspectives. Mm-hmm. Then on the evening of August 1st, 2018, Mary Catherine, now 24 years old, called 911 to report that she had accidentally shot her boyfriend of seven years, Stephen. Okay. She told the dispatcher, um, yes, ma'am, I accidentally, my, my gun was tampered and I'm so sorry. I, I accidentally shot my boyfriend in the neck. I'm so sorry. Oof. When police arrived, they found Mary Catherine attempting to render aid to Stephen, who was on the couple's bed and, and bleeding profusely. First responder body cam footage from that night reveals a chaotic scene, and police had to tell Mary Catherine several times to step away from Stephen so that the professionals could attempt to deliver him aid. Which, like, that's kind of neither here nor there, but Mm -hmm. she just, you know, she was, like, all up in it. Yeah. He was rushed to the hospital, but once there, 23-year-old Stephen was soon pronounced dead. When investigators examined the crime scene, which contained numerous, and some reports say as many as 10, unsecured firearms Oof. in addition to the one that had shot Stephen, including a hunting rifle that had been placed haphazardly on the floor on top of a pile of clothing. Oh, for God's sakes. So if you're such a, a household of fucking gun, my educated God. gun owners, mm-hmm. how on earth is this happening? Mm-hmm. They're just guns littered around. The Lying house. around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're thankfully... There are no children in this home, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but fuck. Yeah. So while the rest of the home appeared relatively well-kempt, recently cooked food was found thrown all over the kitchen, and there are photos on the drive, Mm. leading investigators to believe that a fight may have taken place Mm -hmm. before the couple could eat dinner that Mary Catherine had cooked. Mm -hmm. They, like, tossed plates at each other. and Yeah, something. Mm -hmm. Somebody tossed food at somebody. That is a waste of a beautifully cooked steak. And that the shooting may not have been accidental after all. So it wasn't like they just were living in a pigsty. The house was clean, but Mm -hmm. there were guns everywhere and food all over the kitchen. Yeah, something went down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Mary Catherine was brought to the police station for further questioning, where at first she insisted she had simply been handing the gun to Stephen. And she first said that it was so that he could keep it on his side of the bed and like sleep with it next to him for on his nightstand for protection. Mm -hmm. But like she didn't address the food being thrown around and like whether or not they had had dinner or whether or not it was bedtime. I don't think it was. Mm -hmm. And then she would later change her wording slightly to say that she had tossed it to him. Okay. Tossed the gun. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, that's not what you do with guns. Mm-hmm. And in my this notes, is... I just wrote, great, 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 great. Love it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And that after she had tossed it to him, it had accidentally gone off. Mm, like they do. She also said accidentally twice in her 911 call, Mm -hmm. which I feel like you can always tell in a 911 call if somebody is already trying to diminish guilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. She claimed to not know how this could have happened, as according to her, they never kept any of their guns loaded. Uh Uh-huh. But then, according to the officers who interviewed her, Mary Catherine broke down upon further questioning. I don't know how long they had her in there, but I think it was the same day. And admitted that the couple had fought and that she had shot Stephen out of anger. So she confesses. Mm -hmm. On the basis of this confession, she was arrested and charged with his murder. There was just one problem. When police went back to, like, play back the taped confession, they heard nothing but, like, the hum of feedback Oh, no. <gasps> we had that same audio issue the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, just but, birds and Halloween sounds mm-hmm. inexplicably. Mm-hmm. And Mary Catherine's words were completely inaudible. There was nothing they could do about it. They couldn't get the tape to work. So it's just we know not that usable pain. at all. But yep. yeah, been there. God. Can That's you fucking imagine? Mm-hmm. Well, yes. I mean, we're not trying to solve a murder right right we're just trying to put out an episode mm-hmm. right. and it's frustrating <laughs> and to investigators immense frustration she would not confess again oh my god she saw her window mm-hmm. and was like lol yeah from this point forward mary Catherine would maintain that the shooting had been accidental mm. god even when offered a plea deal by the state she instead chose to go to trial and proclaim her innocence this Trial began in June of 2019 and lasted about one week. The prosecution attempted to paint Mary Catherine as a serial abuser who had shot Stephen in a rage. While the def- and just to be clear, intimate partner violence can absolutely go both ways. It, mm-hmm. it, it was no gender. Women are five times more likely to be victims, mm-hmm. but also men are far less likely to report. Report, and, yeah. And, so, mm-hmm. And individuals in same-sex relationships are far less likely to report as well. Mm. So it's it's a tricky picture. I'm not trying to deny that Stephen could be a victim. Mm-hmm. I we you know there's definitely evidence that he could have been. He, mm-hmm. Well, he was a victim in the end, but you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes these patterns of violence can get like cyclical, yes. where you know couples begin to enact it on each other and it's almost like a chicken or the egg situation right because it gets so volatile right and Mm. when it gets that volatile like both parties are responsible for Mm -hmm. getting out of the situation when it's a situation like that when it's Mm -hmm. you know cyclical and not necessarily coercive control Mm -hmm. you know and and difficult to leave so the, the prosecution says that she's the abuser the defense argues the opposite that Mary Catherine had been the victim of abuse and had accidentally fired the gun in a panic when Stephen lunged at her during a fight complicating the evidence in the case what oh I just also want to say that like for victims of abuse like having a firearm in the home increases the likelihood of homicide by like 400 percent mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So complicating the evidence in the case was not only the unusable supposed confession, but the fact that the responding officers had moved the murder weapon when they arrived at the scene. They had just oh moved it God. a little bit, but it was Doesn't because, matter. well, well. Like they fucked up. Well, there was a person there who had not been pronounced dead, so they needed to administer aid. And there was the suspect in the room, and there was a po- probably obviously loaded weapon and they didn't like immediately put her in cuffs because they were still like administering aid to him. Mm -hmm. So the officers are saying that they moved it away from Mary Catherine for fear that it was still loaded and that she might reach for it while they were there, which is fair. That's fair. And I still hate it, but it's unclear why they didn't just more quickly remove her from the scene Mm -hmm. or, you know, handcuff her or something but you know i think it was like a split second thing 
Mm-hmm. And in I don't – it wasn't like after everything had calmed down and Steven was out of there and she was out of there, they like tampered with the scene. Right. It was I, all in the moment. I think if there's somebody there who is still alive and they need medical attention, that, well, yeah, always, that always takes, takes precedence. priority. It does. So, I mean, that – it's what it's. I I – don't really blame the cops for doing that in that moment either. Right. And I think the defense has the right to bring it up as, you know, I don't know. Everyone, I think everyone did what they were supposed to do in that moment, basically. Mm -hmm. So the prosecution used photographs of the bloody mattress where Stephen's body had been found to counter the claim that he had lunged at Mary Catherine before being shot because... The blood was pooled mostly in one area at the edge of the mattress and not on the floor, mm. suggesting that Stephen had been sitting down when he was shot and not lunging forward. They also presented physical evidence in the form of the murder weapon, which was found to have cooking grease on the magazine and slide, indicating that Mary Catherine not only knew the gun was loaded, but that she herself had loaded it after preparing dinner Oh, that had ended up on the floor of the kitchen, which Mm -hmm. I think is probably the most damning evidence. Mm -hmm. Like she admitted to cooking the dinner. Stephen didn't eat the dinner, so Mm -hmm. there was no cooking grease on him. And then the gun had cooking grease on it, Mm -hmm. like where it it was to be loaded. Yeah, Yeah, that doesn't look good. And the cooking grease is like visible. Like it's not like a trace amount. Like if you go on the drive... with which is the naked eye, you she's can see. lubed up. Yeah. So both the prosecution and the defense presented phone records and text message exchanges as evidence. This stuff I think gets tricky, but the prosecution's evidence showed that on the night of Stephen's death, Mary Catherine had called and texted him dozens of times, asking if he was coming home for dinner. Mm-hmm. After an earlier fight, he had apparently spent the previous night crashing at a friend's house in order to avoid her. So, like, they had been fighting now for two days. Mm -hmm. And And he's over it and and spending the night away. He spent the previous night away. This night, so according to a friend of his, this harassment from Mary Catherine was common. But she had also on multiple occasions threatened suicide during intense arguments. Mm -hmm. And again, this is filtered through the perspective of one of Stephen's friend's based on what Steven told them. So Mm. I don't know if that's true. It sounds like she did, but we don't have hard evidence of her threatening suicide. Mm -hmm. So according to the friend of Steven, he had decided to return home this night because the argument had lasted for two days and she was threatening suicide and he was going to go home. And she was texting him dozens of times being like, I made dinner. Are you coming? What the fuck? Mm -hmm. So, The friend claims that he was giving Stephen a ride home when, quote, she comes out of nowhere riding our tail, like right on our bumper. Hmm. And she pulled up beside my truck, like right beside Stephen, rolled her window down, and she started yelling at him. She said, are you coming home now? And he said, yes, calm down. I'm coming home. But she was like screaming at the top of her lungs. And chasing them in the car. Yeah. That's a little over the top. a lot. Yeah. The texting dozens of times when you're pissed off. Been there. Been there. Have done it. Not on the reg. Mm-hmm. But occasionally. Mm-hmm. Well, when it. you make a nice dinner. Right. Uh, yeah. But this, the, is, this is the exact text conversation I had with Dan when he didn't come home from the strip club. Right. <laughs> you rode your bike home. I rode my bicycle, rode your bike. Too. Onto his bumper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hold up right next to Are him. you coming home now? Now? Mm-hmm. This Did is... you have a nice time? This is, this is Gray, and we are not justifying her insane behavior. Mm-hmm. No, no. So it, I think the evidence does point to she was escalating. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I don't know who did what in the past or previously, but on this particular night, she was escalating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Another friend of Stevens and actually Mary Catherine's co-worker at the sporting goods store, so somebody else who also sold guns at this sporting goods store, Mm -hmm. uh, was a close friend of Stevens, and his name is Thomas Skinner, and he believes in Mary Catherine's guilt, pointing to her profound knowledge of firearms and the unlikelihood that she could so badly mishandle a weapon. Or mm. toss it. Yeah. Right. Or right. not know it was loaded and toss it. Right. 
with greasy fucking hands. It's starting to not add up. Yeah. So not this is quite. This is an interview, and we're starting with from Thomas. Quote, before you're able to sell a gun, you're trained and taught how to handle it, you know, like how to hand somebody a gun. Mm-hmm. Interviewer, do you believe her when she says, I just held it up and it went off? Thomas, no, not for a second. Mm-hmm. Also introduced as evidence were text messages from Stephen to a friend three months before his death that read, quote, MK is running around screaming at the top of her lungs outside, quote, and now she's trying to shoot me and herself. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. And just the day before his death, at the beginning of this two-day fight, Stephen had replied to his mom about the fight. Like, the mom, his mom was, like, checking in on him and was like, how's it going? Are you guys fighting? And he's like, yeah, we're, we're going through it. Mm-hmm. And he told his mom that he was staying at his friend's house and, quote, running from Satan. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Well, that's not a rousing endorsement mm-hmm. of your partner. No. Yikes. Yeah. Indeed, the prosecution claimed that Stephen had recently made the decision to finally break up with Mary Catherine and soon planned to move out to live with his friend Thomas Skinner, a move that would have likely angered and upset Mary Catherine even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's we know that in situations of abuse, when Mm -hmm. the victim is trying to leave... Is the most dangerous time. Is the most dangerous time. So the defense, on the other hand, presented a very different picture of Stephen and Mary Catherine's relationship one in which Stephen was the abuser and Mary Catherine was constantly in fear for her physical safety. And then to the, I'm assuming to the point where she like became untethered and then right. did some of this other shit, which can it's also almost happen. like a self-defense mm-hmm. kind mm-hmm. of angle. Right. Yeah. So Mary Catherine herself took the stand, which is rare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not supposed to do that. And she described years of emotional manipulation, physical abuse, sexual violence, and coercive control that she had claimed to endure at the hands of Stephen. Mm -hmm. So the defense presented text messages that Stephen had sent to Mary Catherine as evidence backing up these claims in one exchange that took place a year prior, which I feel like, how relevant is that? But okay. After Mary Catherine slept with one of his friends while the couple was like briefly on a break. Mm Mm-hmm. Steven sent her a photo of himself holding up a dead fish. Oh, okay. With That's the... like everyone's Tinder photo, mm-hmm. every man's My Tinder God. photo. Was this a threat or a brag? Well, right. with, yeah, with the caption, this is you, bitch. Okay, Ooh, well, that makes that threat. clear. Okay. Not nice. But in Minnesota on Tinder, that's usually a brag mm-hmm. in yeah. the Midwest. Like, look what I get. And then later that same day, he texted her, quote, I'm going to fucking wreck you for wrecking me. Mm. Oh. So not nice. Not nice. Not great. Not great. But, you know, it's a toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. The prosecution argued that because these texts were a response to an emotional situation, they were neither representative of his personality, like, overall, mm-hmm. nor sufficient proof that Stephen was abusive to Mary Catherine. And everybody can present texts. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, it could go either way. Like, you don't know behind closed doors, but yeah, I don't I mean, think it I've mitigates been pretty her mad, guilt. But not like threatened someone's like life with a dead fish. But I this get is saying. you, bitch. Yeah, that's a little far. <laughs> a little, but it's all subjective. It's nose. all subjective too. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good, but it's also. I mean, it's a fish. It's not a pet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's still We're a dead animal. Here. Yeah. <laughs> it's still threatening, and that was yeah. the intention. Right. Right. Yeah. It could have been a stuffed toy. That's you true, know, which is in- actually a very common tactic mm-hmm. and, and very threatening and ominous and not good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. Mm-hmm. So the jury deliberated for four hours, and ultimately, they seemed to find Mary Catherine's account of Stephen's abuse convincing. And she Mm -hmm. was found not guilty on all counts. Dang. Wow. That's surprising. Mm Mm-hmm. Since her acquittal, Mary Catherine has appeared on CBS's 48 Hours to tell her side of the story. She stated in a televised interview that, quote, All I know is what's in my heart, and I know what happened that night. I loved Stephen, and I would never, ever do anything to hurt him. Mm. Except shoot him. Right. Mm -hmm. But she's still claiming it was an accident. Right, right. Right. Okay, well. Yeah, 
And despite the acquittal, Stephen's mother, Jennifer Freeman, who used to view Mary Catherine as a surrogate daughter, remember they had dated all through high school right, and, and right. beyond. They, she'd been in her son's life for seven years. Mm-hmm. She uh, holds Mary Catherine responsible for Stephen's death and mm-hmm. is like, yeah, no, she did it. It's That's it. All because they fucked up that first tape. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Woof. Yeah. And because Woof the tape right. was fucked up, I'm guessing that, like, any hint that she had previously confessed was probably not. All tossed out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Not at trial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. So there's no way for the jurors to know that she had ever confessed. Right. Jesus. Yeah. Which, you know, makes sense. Like, that follows the rule of the law. Right. If it's, if it's not admissible, you can't allude it's to it. It's not admissible. Any, yeah, right. that's it. Mm-hmm. I know. It's very Ugh. tricky, and it's just uh, – I've just finished watching Made. Mm-hmm. So, like, I definitely – it's definitely possible that she was abused. Mm-hmm. But then she, she did also react in some escalating and, and violent ways, which can happen. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I don't, I don't think that – not guilty was the right mm-hmm. call. I think yeah. maybe there were mitigating circumstances if she was a victim of abuse, but it still does seem like it was a premeditated. None mm-hmm. of this is murder is black and white. Yeah, right. It's very, it's complicated. Right. Oof. But for anybody in a relationship at all like this, like it, leave. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I know leaving isn't easy in an abuse relationship. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, like, a toxic, unhealthy relationship where, like, you're both – you're fighting all the time and you're mm-hmm. both unhappy and you're both hurting each other. And it has the – it has the, – it's the capable of and, becoming yeah. a physically abusive. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, like, just uh... – And we do have resources on our website mm-hmm. that can help you if you are – in a similar situation. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's my case. And that was the interrogation angle was that, you know, you got to make sure you're recording. Yeah. <laughs> As check, we've learned check many times. Check fucking equipment. Start that cast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Wow. All right. Well, let's take a mental health break slash sponsor break. Shall yes, we? Mm-hmm. Please. Please, God. So as the year winds down, Another holiday season is upon us. Mm -hmm. And for many, that means a lot of travel, uh, probably some family stuff. Some daylight saving time. Daylight savings. Yeah, just darkness befalling you at 3 p.m. Hello, darkness, my old friend. (laughs) A lot of, like, financial stuff. There's a lot wrapped up in the holidays, okay? It can be a stressful time of year. So tis the season to be jolly, but sometimes it might not feel that way. And that's okay, because you can ease some of these burdens that the holidays can bring up with Talkspace Online Therapy. Talkspace is the greatest gift to ever befall mankind. Mm -hmm. There I said it. I love it. I love it so much. I am an uber millennial, okay? So I like convenience. I like things I can do through my phone. I yeah. like texting. Yep. I like televisits. And you like talking and, about your mental health. And I like talking about my mental health. Yeah. So Talkspace is like my one-stop shop for all of those things. It's incredible. Talkspace is ready to help you start feeling better with a single message. You can set goals with your Talkspace therapist and develop techniques to cope in difficult times. I really love that. Like the actual tangible tools that you're given in these sessions are amazing. Mm -hmm. Talkspace offers individual therapy, couples therapy, and medication prescription services. Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform. There are thousands of licensed therapists available for you to match uh, across dozens of specialties, including anxiety, check, depression, check, check. relationships, got them, check. check. More <laughs> check. Uh, and Talkspace works around your schedule. This is really my favorite thing about it is that it's like 100% at your convenience. You can do live video sessions if you want more of that face-to-face interaction, like a more, you know, traditional session. But there's also unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist, which is my favorite part, because sometimes I will wake up from a weird dream in the middle of the night and go, I need to unpack this and like get it out of my brain 
And yep. so I will text my therapist and during her office hours, she'll respond and be like, you're okay. Everything's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Remember what we <laughs> talked about and these yep. are some things you can do to feel through that. Use the exactly. tools. Exactly. So if you need a little support to help you through the end of the year, or if you want to start building towards a better upcoming year, Talkspace is here to help. Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month with the promo code GALS. That's $100 off when you use code GALS at Talkspace.com and treat your brain. Treat it. You know what is literally the perfect response to anything in life anything that life throws at you a birthday a breakup Mm. an anniversary a holiday besides just going back to bed yep (laughs) the answer though (laughs) well even even to celebrate going back to bed Mm -hmm. cake cake is the correct response to that so you know what do you get for the person who already has everything you get the milk bar send them cake Oh, oh my gosh. So I learned about Milk Bar from Netflix's uh, Chef's Table Pastry Edition. Oh, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So Same. you might have seen that. Okay, so master baker Christina Tosi started Milk Bar in 2008, and then she was featured on this Netflix show. And she's been <gasps> wowing the world with her unique spin on iconic flavors ever since. And Milk Bar is just, like, truly incredible and unique. It's the perfect gift for anyone and everyone in your life, especially folks with a sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. Uh, A few of Milk Bar's bestsellers include their signature birthday cake, which we received. Yeah. Zach Zach was like, did we just get a birthday cake in October? Sure Sure did. did. (laughs) It's someone's birthday somewhere. Let's dig in. I think mm-hmm. it's like maybe Pumpkin's birthday. I'm not really sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they also have the salty sweet compost cookie, mm. which is a lot better than it sounds. Ugh. They also have milk bar pie, which is made from toasted oat crust with a gooey butter filling. Stop. Mm. I'm literally. I'm literally I'm salivating, yeah. (laughs) And right now, pumpkin milk bar pie and apple cider donut cake. Yum. Yeah, we also received that, or I did. I don't know about you Uh, guys. It's so good. I got some of their little, like, truffle balls. Oh, Oh, yeah. I got the apple cider donut balls. Yum. Yum. So good. So these are the desserts that you need on your Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving table this year, Thanksgivinga, whatever mm-hmm. you celebrate. And every milk bar creation is thoughtfully and beautifully packaged, made fresh, then flash frozen, and they offer fast, even overnight nationwide delivery. And you might think, like, how can you ship a, a birthday cake? But they they can, and they figured it mm-hmm. out, and it arrives looking great and tasting incredible. Yeah, they package it so well, and in packaging that keeps things like nice and cool and fresh. I yeah. love it. Yeah. So right now, Milk Bar has a special limited time offer. Get ten dollars off any order of fifty dollars or more when you go to milkbarstore.com/gals. Again, you'll get ten bucks off an order of fifty dollars by going to milkbarstore.com forward slash gals. One more time, milkbarstore.com forward slash gals and treat your sweet tooth treat it Warby Parker was founded with a rebellious spirit and a lofty goal to create boutique quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point they offer eyeglasses sunglasses contact lenses and eye exams and Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores Oh, I'm a big fan of Warby Parker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time I get one of their emails, I just have to go browse their new frames. They just have so many different frames. Mm -hmm. My Warby Sunnies are my favorite. Oh, yeah. I have Warby Parker sunglasses. Mm -hmm. First of all, their glasses start at just $95, and that includes prescription lenses. Mm -hmm. They also have sunglasses. They have blue light lenses. Mm -hmm. So, like, whatever you're looking at, contact lenses. Uh. What? Whatever you're looking for, they've got it. I am currently wearing Warby Parker glasses. Let's see what kind are they. They're the Eugene tortoiseshell. Oh, Those are so cute. A classic. It's really a classic. Mm-hmm. And their website is so shockingly easy. You can also go online and pick out five frames 
and have them shipped to you for free so you can try them on and ask all of your friends which one looks best on you. Mm-hmm. Or like, which one fits on your face because, you know, no one's face is symmetrical. Maybe you got your ears are a little bit off. You got a, a sloped nose. It's helpful it's important to, to just try them on. And again, you gotta, without leaving your house. Yep. You got to try them on. You got to try them on. So if you haven't already tried Warby Parker for all of your eyewear needs, you really got to check them out. Mm-hmm. So like Lucy said, Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. Warby Parker carries a wide variety of contact lens brands, ones that you've heard of like AccuView and Biofinity. Really nice stuff. And you can save 15% on your first order of contacts. Savings are automatically applied at checkout. So visit warbyparker.com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S, to save 15% on your first order of contact lenses. One more time, that's 15% off your first purchase of any contacts brand at warbyparker.com forward slash gals. And treat your eyes. Treat Treat them. Okay, you guys ready for my case? I don't know. Oh, it's way less dark than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay that, was, that was a mess. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a different kind of mess and not even really a case. So while I was looking for a case to cover for this episode, I stumbled into Scientology classic. Oh, are you going to sell us on it? Pretty much. Kenyon's That's, eager. She's thirsty she's for ready. Scientology. <laughs> she's thirsty for it. We walked um, past that building in L.A. Mm-hmm. and she like had a full on chat with one of the guys out front trying to like lure us inside to do this. Yes, I'll take materials. Thank you. Like, I, I mean, love literature. When <laughs> you're in L.A., when in Rome, yeah. when <laughs> in L.A., you have to take Scientology materials. I'm not I'm not at all susceptible to any kind of uh, team, anything. <laughs> we'll see. Which is Wait what until religion you get interrogated. is. <laughs> hold on. Just hold your horses there, kitten. Okay. <laughs> so this is all I'm going to be focusing on today, rather than a specific case, because this was way more fun. Okay. There's obviously a ton that I don't know about Scientology. That's largely because I'm a bad true crime podcaster. I have not done a proper dive into like the infinite documentaries and TV series about it. Mm -hmm. So I was weirded out and surprised to discover that a standard practice in Scientology is an interrogation called a security check. Mm. From Wikipedia, quote, a security check or sec check is an interrogation technique put into practice by founder L. Ron Hubbard in 1960. Sec checks in Scientology are kind of like their version of confession in Catholicism, Mm -hmm. but with way more FBI cosplay. (laughs) It's like it's fucking blackmail. Yeah, they want to get collateral. Oh, we'll get to it. It involves an ethics officer probing the thoughts, attitudes, and behaviors of an individual member by asking them large numbers of questions. The bulk of the questions deal with criminal or sexual activity or intentions or other things that the interviewee might be ashamed of. So it's very, like, rooted in shame and things Mm -hmm. you don't want people to know. Like, there are literal questions that are like, is there anything you never want anyone to know? What's the worst thing you've ever done? Literally, (laughs) we'll get to it. I am am going to be giving you a Imagine soliciting that kind of information from a stranger. (laughs) What a wild... We're basically Scientologists. So the questions also probe (laughs) negative thoughts that the person might have about Scientology in general or about Hubbard. Where do I begin? Yeah. (laughs) They also incorporate a rudimentary lie detector device called an E-meter or electropsychometer... This is an electronic device for displaying the electrodermal activity or EDA of a human being, which means electrodes are like just taped to your skin Mm -hmm. to measure, quote, readings that allegedly indicate if you're telling the truth or not. (laughs) The machine is so stupid that the feds actually court ordered the church to include a disclaimer with its use, stating that the, quote, e-meter by itself does nothing, LOL. (laughs) They have to say that? (laughs) They have to have that on any printed materials where the e-meter has been used or will be used. Like, it has to, the the feds are like, you have to let, be transparent that this it's machine like is the absolute FDA garbage. stepped in. Basically, yeah. Yeah, it's literally the just, yeah, like, like it's a poly pocket sticky, yeah. that you've just glued to someone's like face. <laughs> Look. 
It's a Luck. Tamagotchi. <laughs> Luck. Hold this Tamagotchi, and if it poops on the floor, you're lying. <laughs> I mean. So, I trust it. There are multiple sack checks in Scientology. You can't keep calling it that. I'm sorry. I have to. <laughs> sack check. I, sack check. Ew. The HGC pre-processing security check is sort of a baseline Q&A for new or potential members of the church. HGC stands for Hubbard Guidance Center. Some of the questions include, quote, are you a pervert? <laughs> <laughs> and <Define>. quote. <laughs> right? I wouldn't know how to answer that. I know. <laughs> like, uh, that where be, do I we start? Would, we would waste weeks going oh, down that rabbit hole. Just one question. <laughs> I'm I'm like a John Waters type pervert. Yeah. And quote, Definitely are a pervert, you, though. are you or have you ever been a communist? <laughs> the auditor's sec check is specifically for staff and field auditors of the church. Hubbard was obsessed with loyalty and in constant fear of betrayal, so his staff would be subjected to this 170-question check to make sure they're still loyal to him and the church. Dear God. Questions in this check include, quote, what do you wish you hadn't done? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> coven confession. <laughs> and People volunteer there. I know. We I don't love. ask them 170 times. Yeah. But we also can't can no longer take confessions to witnessing a murder. I, it's oh, just yeah. Too... That was one time, okay? It was one the time. first time. I was like, we oh, my God. We almost got subpoenaed. It wasn't we even can't witnessing. It was like participating. Just knowing about it and not... If we get subpoenaed, we're handing over information. Oh, yeah, we so, have like, to. at minimum, create Confess a fake at your Gmail own account. Risk. Don't yeah. email us from your work account. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, 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 it boggles the mind that it has to be said. I know. I know. We really didn't think it had to be said. And All then immediately of your work it had emails to be said. do not belong to you. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so another question. There's on... fine print in yeah. the employee handbook. There's yeah. a lot of fine print. I've made an employee handbook. So another question on the auditor's security check is, quote, are you upset by this security check? <laughs> yes. Lopez. I'm upset. Yeah, I am. I'm upset are, that you call it a sack check. Sack check. <laughs> there are even security checks for children and the truly bizarre whole track security check, which is hundreds of questions long and aims to dive into your entire current corporeal existence on earth as well as any past lives you may have lived. <laughs> I want to do an entire episode that we're just sec checking each other. Well, we're about to get to it. <gasps> so this hard hitting questionnaire asks such questions as, quote, did you come to earth for evil purposes? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> have you ever Define smothered earth? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever smothered a baby? Oh, my God. <laughs> that escalated fucking quickly. What the fuck? Jesus. Yeah. Have you ever zapped anyone? Oh, my yes. God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No clarification needed. Yes. No. And have you ever made a planet or nation radioactive? Yes. <laughs> I honestly don't know if I would pass I mean, that one. To I don't be know. Does that have to do with my carbon footprint? Thank I am you. not sure. Are you a pervert? <laughs> I mean, like the only one I can answer on this clearly is no. I've never smothered a baby. Never like, that's smothered the, a baby. That's the that only you one know I can. Of. That's the only one I can confidently <laughs> yeah, get right. Yeah, they're about to implant a memory. Oh God. Yeah. Oh God. Anyway, the most notoriously brutal sack jack of the church is none other than the Johannesburg security check no. or Joburg sack check. No. Yeah. Hubbard himself heralded this as his roughest security check in Scientology. The interrogation is named as such because Hubbard wrote it in his lavish mansion in Johannesburg, South Africa. Oh, my God. I forgot that. Well, I'm about to remind you. So from PRI.org, quote, few realize that it was here in South Africa at the time under strict racial apartheid, where Hubbard developed key practices for new members joining the organization. While Hubbard lived in Johannesburg for only six months from September 1960, he would later describe this time as instrumental in Scientology's development. 
And the home is now a landmark site and can be toured by visitors. Okay, this is making so much more sense because when we were in L.A., Lucy, do you remember? And I was talking to those Scientology guys on the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. She just opened up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> opened right up. And I said that I was living in Johannesburg and they lit up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they were like talking. They were they had all birthplace of Scientology. I, I guess. had completely forgotten that. I thought it was just like a weird coincidence. Mm-hmm. I thought they were just trying to lure you into the building. I mean, I mean they both. were. I wasn't I'm not worried about it working. So it I was am. just funny. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I know Lucy it was did. skittish. <laughs> Lucy was like I like Highly suggestible. I yes. was worried about m- me being lured. I, I in. can't go near that place. It's like, like I a said, magnet. strong breeze. <laughs> strong breeze, and my mind is in a totally different place. I just so, wanted to waste their time, and I did. But you did. This Congratulations. Okay. Hubbard relocated to South Africa to establish Scientology there, but also claimed he came to quote help with the apartheid oh, situation. I'm fucking sure. While there are reports that he appealed to white leadership at the time to, quote, treat everyone equally, his personal writings would tell a very different story. Mm -hmm. He refers to black South Africans as, quote, primitives who were only outside the bars of a madhouse because there are no madhouses provided by their tribe. What Uh, a fucking great guy. He's a piece of shit. And we wow. already knew this, but this just makes it even just, an, uh, just another more layer that is often forgotten to mm-hmm. his shittiness. Yep. And in correspondence with Hendrik Vuurd, a former president said to be a crucial architect to apartheid in South Africa, that quote, having viewed slum clearance projects in most major cities of the world, may I state that you have conceived and created in the Johannesburg townships what is probably the most impressive and adequate resettlement activity in existence. That is disgusting. Mm-hmm. Which may we I, all may know I is horrific. you, sir, on yeah. your concentration camps. Right. And slum these clearance projects. Literal concentration camps and the mm-hmm. conditions in these settlements remain pretty terrible to this day as a mm-hmm. result, like a lingering result of apartheid. So mm-hmm. he, he looked upon this as an absolute success, and it makes my fucking stomach turn. Oh my so God. Hubbard spread the word of Scientology among black South Africans, and some referred to him as a, quote, white traditional healer. He certainly believed himself to be great, stating that, quote, peace for Africa could depend on Scientology. Uh, but funny oh after God. how after leaving Johannesburg in 1961, again, after only six months, he never went back, but he mm-hmm. did go and proselytize in Zimbabwe for six months before returning to the States. So he spent a year in Africa and then was like, okay, bye. Never mind. This isn't working. I can't get enough money out of these people. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So the Johannesburg security check has been retired and like outlawed, quote unquote, but many claim it's still being used in some form today. And I grabbed a copy of it. Yes. Oh, my God. So shall I check you? Check oh, me. yeah. Check, check, me. check me, baby. I'm about to check Oh, this you. is really long. Yeah, I'm not going to do the whole thing. Okay. Also, don't open it. You had the link. Yeah, for myself. I okay. didn't open it. I Good. win. Lucy, I'm already ahead in the second. Lucy check. is a negative point. Oh, I just zapped a planet. Sorry. You zapped it. Okay, <laughs> did you close it now? Yes. It's not like okay. I smothered a baby. Well, it's starting to feel like you did. <laughs> I'm not going to be surprised when we get to that question. Okay, here are some baseline questions. Are you sitting in a chair? Yes. Yes. Are you Always. on the moon? No. Emotionally. Lucy oh is God. a cancer. Yeah, Lucy cannot join. <laughs> Lucy's already off of this. So you cannot join Scientology. You're too difficult. <laughs> Are all cats black? No, unfortunately. Am I an ostrich? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't be my first go to animal. Are for you, you a pervert? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is this Earth? But I, I don't know. I thought I was on the moon. Yeah, what's well, this? You're not on the moon. Define this. Exactly. Mm. Have you ever drunk water? <laughs> yes. Yeah, drinking Are water you now. holding up a tree? What the fuck? This is so dumb. No. Am I an elephant? Oh dear God. This Are is... you a table? No. I this can't. body shaming. Is this a confessional <laughs> list? No. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the next several ones are this like is, this is painfully stupid. Oh, those are just the baseline questions to know to determine on the little oh, the, poly, the poly pocket meter. 
okay. If you're the lying e- or the not. The e-meter. They'd be like, yep. your, your frustration levels are just off the charts. The Tamagotchi <laughs> is reading really, really wild it's just, stuff. It's, it's pooped 16 it's pooped times. It's pooped all over the place. I think it died. Rapid fire. <laughs> There's just little vapor, digital vapors going up from the poops. <laughs> <laughs> These next ones are mostly about criminal activity. Like, have you ever lived or worked under an assumed name? Have you given us the right name? Are you here for a different purpose than you say? Have you stolen anything? Have you forged someone else's signature? Yes, yes. my mom's on every bad report card I've ever gotten. <laughs> I forge your signatures all oh, the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to. Have you ever blackmailed anybody? Probably. Have you ever been blackmailed? Probably. No, have you ever sadly. smuggled anything? Yes. yes. Unsuccessfully. Have you, been, mm-hmm. have you ever been in prison? No. no. Have you ever indulged in drunkenness? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Embezzled money? No. Told lies in Lucy. court? <laughs> no. Lucy, quiet. <laughs> have you ever had anything to do with pornography? Which yeah. I assume oh, yeah. means like being in the same room as pornography. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you ever, quote, Peddled dope. <laughs> no. Sure. I've bought it. I've been peddled too. <laughs> Have you ever peddled dope? Well, and by dope, do you mean weed or do you mean like dope? I don't know. There's no distinction. I assume they mean anything For that could fall under that category. Clues, I'm going to go with they mean marijuana. Oh, I'm sure. I'm just going to go with yes. Have you ever practiced <laughs> homosexuality? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you ever had intercourse with a member of your family? Ew, no. No. Not that I'm aware of. Oh, this is a good one. Have you ever slept with a member of a race of another color? Really on the nose, (laughs) Elrond. Jesus. Have you ever committed culpable homicide, bombed anything, murdered anyone, kidnapped anyone? Oh Done God. any illicit diamond buying? <laughs> diamond buying. Very specific to Johanna. Some of these are, I know, some of these are super out of left field and really mm-hmm. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had anything to do with communism or been a communist? Yes. Have you ever been a newspaper <laughs> reporter? Yes. Oh, yeah, Lucy has. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? In college, I guess we'll count it. I mean, yeah. I was bad at it, but yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had anything to do with a baby farm? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't like, know, but it does not sound good. I've been near a baby on a farm. Mm. Like no, a maternity ward? I don't, think, I don't ward? think that's what they mean. No, I don't, I don't like, think that like, a baby farm like is a maternity ward. For I'm sale. A, yeah, I would imagine. It's no. like the, like the illicit selling agency? of children. No. Yeah, but like an illegal <laughs> adoption thing. Oh like, you God. know. I mean, they're not very specific whatsoever. They're not. But here's a good one. How do you feel about sex? Yes. <laughs> no. I want it to feel good and not take too long. Am I asking for much? <laughs> I'm so here for that. No marathons for me. Thanks. Yeah. No. I just want it to feel nice. And w- as soon as it stops feeling nice, I want Stop it to be me. over. Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. <laughs> Have you committed any overts against mankind? Yes. What? <laughs> Have you committed any overts against matter? The, overts the against fuck? energy? Overts against space? Overts against time. Overt. Overts against animals and plants. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck an overt is. <laughs> I'm going to Google it. What is an overt in, in Scientology? Science. Scientology. How could you help spirits? Have you committed any overts against spirits? Oh. It's got to be like something bad. Have overt. you ever done a no-no? Okay, yeah, no, no. When it's over, it's when someone does something harmful that goes against a moral code they have agreed to. This is what is called an overt act, or more simply, an overt. Okay, this and is, a no, no, a no, no, a no. Have you committed any no nos against God? <laughs> yeah. Have you committed any no nos against infinity? Yes. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> what is communism? Do you feel communism <laughs> has some good points? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I don't know what. Look up this one. Have you ever injured Dianetics or Scientology? I don't know what Dianetics I th- are. I think that's like okay. Dianetics was his book. Dianetics: oh. The Modern Science of Mental Health. Got it. Okay. It's a yeah. set of ideas about the metaphysical relationship between the mind and body that he wrote. Okay. It's okay. another batshit L. Ron yeah. Hubbard. Thing. Got it. Do you have any overts on LRH? Maybe. <laughs> any no no any no no's? Any no-nos? Ron? Have you ever had unkind thoughts about LRH? I have yes. a lot of them right now. Said it yeah. out loud. I've said yeah. it's a fucking race, bad shit racist <laughs> piece of garbage. <laughs> Do you know of any secret plans against Scientology? Sadly, no. Yes. I know. Leah Romini. Oh, They're not true. so secret. <laughs> Do you know of any any plans to injure a Scientology organization? No. no I did try to waste their time in L.A. Well, yeah. You and are you this. upset about this confessional? Yes. Yes. Because yes. it's so <laughs> stupid. That was only a smattering of the over 100 questions I feel like here. I could have written such a better list of questions. Oh, I'm sure. To they, elicit collateral yeah. from someone. They well, I mean, there are a lot that I skipped, but yeah, they're not. It's not a clever quiz. No. It's not the Fit Finder quiz from Third Love. Let me tell yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> the, so this is what they have to read to people. Like the auditor has to read this, or well, the 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 administrator of this Fit Finder quiz for Scientology <laughs> yeah. has to read this to the person that says, "quote." I am not auditing you. We are about to begin an HCO confessional. We are not moralists. We are able to change. We are able to change people. We are not here to condemn them. While we cannot guarantee you that matters revealed in this list will be held forever secret, mm. we can promise you faithfully that no part of it nor any answer you make here will be given to the police or the state. <laughs> Might not be your fucking choice, friend. Yeah, no exactly. Scientologists. You can't guarantee that, and they, they do the, and they even say that they won't keep it a secret. Yep, exactly. No Scientologist will ever bear witness against you in court by reason of answers to this confessional. That they might be able to do because I feel like there's got to be some sort of religious, like yeah, can't compel uh, like a yeah, religious it's like confessor. a married couple kind of a or like a loophole. priest. Mm-hmm. Priests do have to tell if something's about to happen. Yeah. Mm. It's it's like your mandated reporters, basically. Yeah, if somebody is like that. planning a crime. Mm-hmm. This confessional is exclusively for Scientology purposes. The only ways you can fail this confessional are to refuse to take the test. I fail. fail. Yeah, I fail. To fail to answer its questions truthfully, or if you are here knowingly to injure Scientology. Yep. Check. We fail. The only penalty attached to failure of this confessional is our refusal to employ you or issue a certificate, and this will only happen if we find that you are trying knowingly to injure Scientology. (gasps) I'm not going to get a certificate? No. I'll make you one. Okay. I still have a bookmark. Oh, good. (laughs) Let me use that as a foundation for making Kenyon's certificate. Okay. I'll send (laughs) you you a picture. Perfect. You can pass this test by, one, agreeing to take it, Two, answering each question truthfully. And three, by not being a member of a subversive group seeking to injure Scientology. Ah, uh, we're in the wine coven. Yeah. The first questions are null questions to determine your reaction pattern. We will now begin. And then they affix the Tamagotchi to your face and <laughs> ask you a million fucking questions. And that is, that's it. That's my case. That's wow. all I wanted to do today was talk about sex checks from Scientology. Well, that. that is a form of interrogation. It is. And a very stupid one. Mm. <laughs> Highly ineffective. Highly ineffective. Although, you know, if somebody is already bought in, you know, if somebody's already like brainwashed, mm. then they, you know, then it could be effective, I guess. But if you're just Pulling somebody in off the street, I don't think this is going to work. Mm, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, oh. I just thought that was kind of fun and a little something different for our listeners today. Love mm-hmm. it. All yeah. right. Well, well done. Don't oh. don't join any cults. Don't smother any babies. Don't what do is that. It that. What is it that uh, Karen That's and George say? Like, call your dad. You're in a coat. <laughs> 
cult. Cult. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> totally. Yep. There are a lot of cults out there. Some of them sell leggings. <laughs> I was just going to say um, Lou LaRoll. <laughs> um, and some of them believe in this crap. Too tempting for some of them. All right. Well, special thanks this week to us. We're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and to all of you for listening, thanks for putting up with our bullshit. Yeah, we'll see you next week for more bullshit. Let's do it. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kala Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have questions, answers, or recommendations to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is bringing you more power, capability, and savings with the full lineup of new Ram trucks during the Black Friday sales event going on all month long. Lease a 2024 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Bighorn for $429 per month. Visit our two convenient metro locations in Blair or Bellevue or online anytime. Lease for 42 months, 10,000 miles per year. With approved credit, tax title license extra. $2,500 down plus first payment and $299 dock fee to its signing. Example stock number BC230242. Offer expires 1130-2023. See dealer for details.